Uh, channel switch announcements. How did it start? Um, generating some radar signals, trying to show things off. Yes, we can see what the spectrum does. I put a whole bunch of APs on uh, channel 116, generated signals on the primary channel and see what happened, and boom, everybody was gone. In a matter of seconds, just cleared up that area. So how is it that devices will move? Because evidently they all left. Well, they all kind of did different things. I had a, well, I don't have to read the APs. They're on the screen, so you can just read them yourself. Um, some went up. That mist went up, uh, went down actually from uh, 116 to 40. Um, the ruckuses uh, went a different direction, went kind of the same direction, different channels. Notice that the Cisco 9E130 went to a different operating class. Wow. Does that sound like I know what I'm talking about? Guess what I learned that? Wes, thank you. Operating class, oh, he's out there. Um, but it switched. It went to a different channel width, which for me was interesting. Um, so how did each one of them make the announcement? Uh, in the case of the mist, it sent an action frame per BSS ID, and then kind of letting clients know where they were going. Like, I'm moving to channel uh, 112, and then it kind of said how many, and then it started doing, in the beacon frames, on each one of them, doing a, um, a channel switch announcement element and kind of like giving more details about it. Did it per, I said I didn't, then left. The Rackless 550, it uh, did the same thing, uh, and it announced, hey, hey, I'm gonna announce it three times, and then if you dig into it, the details is like, don't transmit anymore on this channel because we're going to move to this other channel in three, two, one, and boom, it disappears. This other ruckus uh, did a similar thing. It said, hey, I'm going to move in 20, and then it started making an announcement like 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, like, ah, never mind, it just moved. So I was expecting all the 20 right there, but it didn't. So, but it still made the announcement. The Cambium had a Cambium also in very, you know, kind of like following the same rules as the other ones, made the action, sent the action frame, then inside the beacon started including what it was gonna do. The Cisco, here it is, didn't send an action frame, just in the beacon, the last five beacons, it started including the uh, channel switch announcement element and made the announcement. Here is the announcement of the Aruba. And kind of, I was like, did I miss something? Did I do something wrong? And started checking, finding out, uh, talking to people. I found out that Aruba has an option when you set up the network to just give it the option to not make a channel switch announcement. So it, by default, uh, this network that I have right there had the 802.11H disabled, which by default, I guess, does not announce, right? I have the Aruba guy here nodding at me like, yep. Wait. So, and then I thought to myself, like, that's rude. You leave the channel without letting people know. And then I, I thought, I was like, wow. But then, you know, in talking to Peter McKenzie, he said, like, well, there is a reason for that. You know, that's actually a good thing, right? He said, like, why? And he said, well, think about it. <clears throat> if I'm moving from a DFS channel to another DFS channel, I'm gonna to have to do a, the uh, channel availability check, correct? Which means you're gonna be 60 seconds continuously listening, making sure there are no radar signals there. Correct me there if I'm wrong, Mr. Coleman. That's about right, huh? okay? So which means if the client's gonna follow you to that channel and the client's gonna be there, waiting for 60 seconds for the AP to be available, I don't know, that's kind of like more rude, isn't it? Like, okay, if, but now that's assuming the clients will follow and go to that channel and patiently wait for the AP to become available. The other thing is we are kind of like assuming what clients are gonna do. Basically, we depend on client behavior. What if the client doesn't go to that channel? Because the client, you know, Clients don't care if you're rude. Clients don't have feelings. 
They don't get sad or happy or angry. They're like, oh, you're leaving? Okay. They may follow you. They may not. Or they may ignore your channel switch announcement and stay there trying to send data. No act data. No act data. Which at that point, that client will be kind of like causing trouble because he's not supposed to be sending data on a DFS channel unless an AP. But he thought the AP was there. The AP left, didn't say anything. So the client doesn't know. It's trying to send data and there's nobody to get, eventually it will move. Or if it gets a channel switch announcement and say, hey, I'm going to channel 112, it's like, whatever, I'm going to channel 36. Or I'm going to roam and do an in-ban or out-ban or uh, uh, reduce neighbor report or whatever and then go or not go. So client behavior is very difficult. I did more tests. I did it now on, on channel 100. And then I generated a radar signal uh, in the primary channel. Uh, capture on all 20s, kind of see what happened. Uh, of course, we don't have uh, time to, like, to go over everything. But notice, there is one of these guys that move from the channel 100 to channel 108. So just basically scoot up a little bit. Instead of using the whole 80, just move to a 40 just above. Hmm, I wonder who that was. So. Apparently, you know, uh, Cisco like to do the, the change of channel width if necessary, I guess, I assume, you know, they all make decisions however they think it's best. Uh, and this is the pattern they follow. Now, I also did the same thing on, on channel uh, 52 at 80, but this time I sent the radar signal on the far end, on the secondary channel that is as far away from the primary as possible. And yep. Kind of like the pattern, you know, some go up, some go down, some go to different places, some scoot over. So yes, um, channel switch announcements are kind of like different per vendor. And yes, we're trying to, I guess, please our clients. That's why we make the, the channel switch announcements, kind of like to let them know uh, where we're going. And uh, they're all kind of announcements. It's not just channel switch announcements are not just used when there is a radar event. You can send a channel switch announcement when there is an RRM adjustment, when you decide to move for load balance, for whatever reasons, then uh, you can send all other announcements. And clients may choose not to do anything. 802.11k, those are announcements like, hey, you know, there are some possible neighbors here. If you go or not, that's, that's something that the client has to decide. Um, and those events, either radar or not radar, uh, vendors will announce one way or another. There will be DFS events, or in this case, uh, the missed interface lets you know if, uh, if an access point move from what channel to what channel, from one channel width to what channel width, based on what, if it was radar, if it was, you know, RM adjustments. And again, we're all depending on client behavior. So, of course, <coughs> same as with... Um, Devices, announcements, announcements are everywhere, you know. The, everybody gets an AP announcement, you know. The, uh, I'm moving from uh, New Zealand to the Netherlands announcements. Uh, the, you know, I used to work for uh, Aruba, now I work for Cisco announcements. So everybody's got announcements for everything. And we, the clients, always have, you know, a response, a reaction. Oh, wow, you know. Or there are some more controversial announcements, you know, like I voted for Trump announcements. People, oh, you did? So all kind of announcements, all kind of reactions and responses from the clients. And then there is like, you know, those really, really, really uncomfortable announcements that, you know, like the, I really want to go to Prague, but, you know, I have lung cancer. What do you do? What do you say? Like, that would be like, ah, do I call him? Do I say sorry? What do I do? So the one thing I could think with German was, hey, uh, can I come and see you? But I was afraid that he was going to say, no, no, I want to be by myself. I don't want anybody here. I don't know what he was going to say. So I still kind of like, mm. uh, I said, okay, if I go see you, sure. So I went and visited. And then if... Things were in worse. There's the, you know, I was diagnosed with ALS announcement, you know, kind of given certain time to leave. And those are even worse because I didn't know what to do because, you know, Raymond is one of our own. You know, I had him in class in Lisbon 
and then he became an uh, Ekahau instructor, and he's been a teacher to many, he's been um, a student to many, he's been a friend to many. He actually paid a couple of speeding tickets that I got in the Netherlands when I was there. I reimbursed him, though. Didn't I? Well, I hope I did. But he's, he's that kind of friend. He will just do whatever for you. So he made the announcement, and we were in the same condition. Like, what do we do? I mean, how do you respond to that? I don't want to be offensive. And then he said, it was very clear, I don't want pity. I don't want to do like that. No, just I want to have normal. But how do you respond normal to that? So um, he wanted to you know, have a good time, come here, and build memories. And you know, made an announcement. Other guys made the announcement. Hey, we're going to go have dinner. We're going to have, you know, go to the medieval tar- tavern. And we said, like, oh, we can, yeah, perhaps get him drunk and feed him, you know, medieval times way and have a good time. We had a good time and we're building memories. So, Raymond, you're building memories with us here now. That's great. Thank you very much. But we were like, okay, what else can we do? So, we sent another announcement because it's all about announcements, uncomfortable announcements that you don't know. It took me weeks. Like, what do we do? So, I talked to Troy because Troy's been working with him on his deep dives. I talked to Mr. Parsons and we kind of started the ball rolling. And, you know, since it's all about uh, building memories, you know, one of the things he said, he would like to build memories, you know, in Japan. And then we sent the announcement uh, without him knowing. I hope he didn't know about it. But, no, we're not going all to Japan with you, Raymond, if you're uh, worried about that. But then um, many people responded. I don't know, uh, Raymond, if there are some names there that you don't recognize, because I didn't either, and they actually told me, like, for now, I don't know who Raymond is, but, you know, I'm really... Uh, sympathetic of this situation and every client and of course now we're not talking about just you know phones or those type of clients talking about now we are the clients that we do have emotions and we do feel touched because this is one of our own one guy that has drunk with us has played with us we went shooting guns in a missile silo in in the u.s you know so we've had a lot of great times, and it's about building memories. So Raymond, thank you very, very much for building memories with us here now. But then it doesn't stop there. It was like, okay, what can we do? And we sent another announcement. And all these guys that responded gathered $20,000, because now he made another switch announcement. He said, I want to go to Brazil instead. So Raymond... <laughs> You're going to Brazil to visit Lariana. Thank you. And, and thank you, everyone. There are a lot of names that are not there, not because they didn't help, because they are helping in many, many other ways. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I was an Android or an Apple. I don't know, a client with no feelings, but. No, but thank you very much. I guess you can go in now.